A few days ago, the British Foreign Office banned RT and Sputnik, two of the most prolific fake news factories the Kremlin has in its industrial lying machine, from attending a conference in London on media freedom. The official reason? Their active role in spreading disinformation. Maria Zakharova, spokeswoman for the Russian Foreign Ministry, said the UK needs to prove these charges, otherwise it's slander. Well, this is Top Fake, the place where we've been debunking Russian disinformation for five years, and we have a list. So let's get to it. By March 2014, Russia's military operation to invade, occupy and annex Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula was fully underway. In fact, Russian servicemen who were part of the operation received this medal with the start and end dates of their operation. It began on February 24, 2014 and ended on March 18, 2014. Little green men, heavily armed and equipped, seized airports and state institutions in Crimea, while the Russian Navy launched a blockade around Ukrainian naval bases. Then they set the date of the referendum, because holding a referendum under the barrel of a gun is a good way to guarantee favorable results. But just to make sure that the atmosphere was saturated with fear, the Kremlin also set up a disinformation component to its operation. Russian TV channels provide almost endless reports about trains of Nazis heading towards Crimea to murder Russian speakers and start pogroms against Jews. Paula Siller prepared a story about Rabbi Misha Kapustin from Simferopol who feared for his life. She creates the impression that Rabbi Kapustin abandoned his home and is trying to save his family from Ukrainian Nazis and other anti-Semites advancing on Crimea and shows pictures of a Kiev synagogue spray-painted with graffiti that read, Death to Jews. But Rabbi Kapustin was in fact the author of a call to save Ukraine from Russian occupation that he posted on Yevreski Kiev, a website about Jewish life in Ukraine, on March 2, 2014. And the reality is that the graffiti appeared on a synagogue in Simferopol after Russian troops were in full control of the city. Slier wants to project an image of a Jewish community looking for safe havens, and understandably so, because Russia has a long, dark history of anti-Semitism. So, where would people find security to escape the supposed Ukrainian Nazis? Well, according to Rabbi Kapustin's own Facebook page, apparently to Lviv, the historical hotbed of pogroms and anti-Semitism, according to Russian narratives about the city. Clearly, Rabbi Kapustin was not escaping the Kiev junta, but in fact fled from Russia's occupation of Crimea. Stopfake has debunked Slayer's disinformation about Nazis invading Crimea several times. This piece is a classic example of RT disseminating not only disinformation, but straight up lies. In 2015, a small but significant media spotlight was on Eric Dreitzer, claiming to be an independent geopolitical analyst and regular commentator on RT. Being from New York added a serious tone to his observations. After all, this wasn't some Kremlin court political scientist from Moscow, but someone from the West who deserves at least the benefit of the doubt. His biography claims that he's a regular contributor to RT, Counterpunch, New Eastern Outlook, Press TV, and others. But these sites are all extensions of the Russian disinformation network spewing anti-American, anti-Israel, and anti-European diatribes, basically acting as noise and pollution in order to obscure real news. And they're about as reliable as gnomes and unicorns. For regular viewers of RT, he started to foam at the mouth about the cave junta and punishers and describes plans Ukrainian authorities apparently had to destroy the memorial to the victims of Nazi crimes in Babi Yar. Well, the team at Stop Fake rummaged through Dreitzer's biography and it turns out he's not a political scientist at all. We found his profile on LinkedIn and apparently he sells car insurance. His pieces are all hosted on the RT website suggesting RT devoted resources to create this geopolitical analyst persona. But like anything else, funding seems to have dried up and his analyses all ended in April 2017. Not often do we see the host of a TV show quit their job on air, but that's exactly what Liz Vol, an employee of RT, did, saying that she no longer wanted to be part of Putin's propaganda machine. Later, she'd reveal the inside of Russia's industrial lying machine. Then there was British reporter Sarah Firth, another RT correspondent who resigned from RT, refusing to participate in spreading lies. After she quit, she also revealed how RT company employees run fake accounts on social media where they all blame the downing of Malaysian Airlines Flight MH17 on Ukraine. She tweeted the RT style guide rule number one, quote, it is always Ukraine's fault. 
And by the way, the Spanish air control dispatcher who allegedly saw a Ukrainian flight aircraft near the flight path of MH17 was invented at RT, and the fake Spaniard was paid tens of thousands of euros. Remember, Russia's internet troll agency churned out over 65,000 tweets with the hashtag cave shot Boeing down and cave provocation for two days after MH17 was shot down by a Russian Buk missile that came from a military base in the Russian Federation. Finally, you won't be surprised to learn that around the world, and in particular in countries that were formerly occupied by the Soviet Union, RT has spread all kinds of lies and disinformation about fake crucifixions or that Ukraine's Ministry of Defense distributes Russian-speaking slaves to members of the Ukrainian armed forces. Reports like the Ukrainian government deliberately bombing civilians or Ukrainian soldiers wantonly killing and torturing journalists are a regular fixture on Russian television. The theatrics and RT almost always declare Ukrainians are engaged in ethnic cleansing, the likes of which the world hasn't seen since the Nazi crimes against humanity during the Second World War. It was for this kind of programming that RT received a warning from the British regulator and almost lost its license to broadcast. Free speech is not a license to lie. And when the British Foreign Office bans RT and Sputnik from attending a conference in London about media freedom, that means someone is finally taking the threat that the Kremlin fake factory represents to free speech seriously. But Western governments should also consider that taking away the broadcast license of RT, Sputnik and other agents of Russian disinformation is actually something that will protect free speech. That's it for this week. These were only a few examples of Russian media lies that we debunk on a regular basis and you'll find it hard to call people who work at RT journalists after you read the dissected disinformation on our website, stopfake.org. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified about future updates. Be vigilant, look out for fakes, and if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran. Thanks for watching.